You're listening to the Jiu-Jitsu Lou podcast with me, Lou Tamlett. I'm guessing you're having a good day because either you've been on the mats, considering getting on the mats, or maybe taking your future self to train. I'm so happy you're here listening or watching this episode. Please don't tap out before the end. When you want to improve your mental health and work through past trauma, start training jujitsu. I'd like to welcome Sandra Hins to my podcast. Hi, Sandra. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? Very good. Thank you so much for joining me. So in my intro, I spoke about, you know, when you want to improve your mental health and work through your past trauma, this is very key to your story and your journey. So we'll we'll kind of pause that bit for, for now. And I want to know when you started training jiu-jitsu and yeah, how how you how you kind of got into it. I think I started around 2019 and in September and it was both because of my brother and then some past experiences that I kind of wanted to overcome and also gain confidence at the same time. That's really good. And I think, you know, some of us, you know, I, I didn't know what I was letting myself in for when I started training yeah. jiu-jitsu, didn't have a clue, but I'm in a much stronger and much more resilient place now for it. So you've been training for a good number of years and you're a blue belt. Yeah. Tell me about your um, your jiu-jitsu journey and how easy or tough or challenging it may have been. It's really tough, to be honest, but it's been so incredibly fun at the same time. Uh, I feel like as well, the hard times help me develop like for the present. Yeah. So like especially when you've quite often been the only girl on the mat as well. It's become even harder. That's why I'm also passionate about getting other girls to train as well. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, fantastic. Sorry for my outburst, everyone. Um, I I love it when I hear um, that other women want uh, to encourage other women to, to be on the mats. You know, it's such a wonderful place. And I think, you know, it, it's that unspokenness when you're there. There's that balance of actually this is our space. Mm. But to grow and develop ourselves is to encourage others to join mm-hmm. and to be part of something quite incredible and amazing. Yeah. So tell us about the really exciting times. And then we'll come back to the challenging and tough times in a bit. <laughs> I think some of the really exciting ones is like at the times where you kind of started to connect things and understand the game a bit more because in the beginning you're just like swimming in the deep end but now it's I don't know that much but at least I start to grasp like the concepts of everything yeah so for me it's going a little bit <laughs> further up nice nice so do you have uh, do you have some moves that you really like or some positions that are Sandra's positions? Omoplata and North and South. Okay. Why why the Omoplata? I, I've seen it demonstrated. I couldn't give you a full description right now, but um, anyone that does train jiu-jitsu will know what an Omoplata is. <laughs> it kind of, I don't know. I just watched other higher, like higher level uh, com- competitors especially the ladies that like to do it as well for yeah. me it kind of became like a bridge between the size difference as well yeah because i like to use my legs a lot to even out the difference between the boys and the girls nice i love that so north south i kind of is that a progression from obviously no before i'm platter because i'm platter is a submission yeah. is that right yeah. okay that's fine at least okay I've just I've just notched a little notch in my in my white belt of knowledge there. (laughs) So north north south. Yeah. What? Why and how and what does that give you in your game? I feel like for me it's a better control position for me because I feel kind of frozen in the other (laughs) position sometimes. I like I like mount mount as well, but I've. I've discovered that I'm quite comfortable when I can get to the north and south position. Oh. Yeah, because there's nice. a lot of uh, chokes as well. Once again, if you compare it to me being the smaller grappler, 
where yeah. you can get a lot of pressure as well when you do the chokes, for example. Yeah, nice. I love so that. Stuck with me. <laughs> I love that. It's about developing our game and finding positions that work for our body type or our, yeah. you know, style of style of jujitsu. Love it. So um, let's talk about some of the tougher times through your jujitsu journey. Oh boy. <laughs> Nah, I feel like I said with uh, just being the only girl I always yeah. love going to practice but there are some days where you're just like I wish I had someone that could completely understand what it's like to like go through these different things like with the when you have a triggering situation or when you're yeah. going up against a much bigger opponent there's there are days when you just get tired in your head like your mental health starts yeah. escalating a bit yeah absolutely. you always yeah you always process it in the end but there are like some days can be quite heavy yeah I I really appreciate that and kind of want to hold space for you because you know that I think you know all of us um can be triggered if we're mm -hmm. connecting you know it's such a a mindful um game you know, there's a lot of thinking, there's a lot of strategy that certainly goes on in my head, probably yours as well, and anyone yeah. else that's listening. And um, when you have a physical trigger, your mind can almost set you back mm. away from that, the technique that you're, you know, thinking about to yeah. somewhere very different. And then once your mindset and your thoughts are taken away from the present moment, it, it you know, I, I know occasionally I've had to walk off the mats because of, you know, certain triggers. And yeah. and that's really hard for people to understand. You know, even if you're hiding the tears and walk mm. away and then come back completely composed, mm. um, that still has happened and been in that space. So, you know, that there's a lot of care and consideration, but also on, I guess, on the flip side, it's having you know, if people don't understand, actually, sometimes that's also okay, because yeah. you can then snap out of your situation and your mindset to get back into the the space of training. I've been lucky as well, because my teammates, they're also encouraging as well. They know a lot of my past struggles as well. I've been open with it because, yeah. like I said, I, I want to help others that might be in the same situation or have similar experiences as well. Yes. And and that's really good. And I think, you know, so much of the the training is, uh, you know, I've seen a shift where there's a lot more communication and a lot more understanding of each other. And there's time to do that during training. You know, it's not a, a kind of tight, serious thing. It's yeah. very much more playful, understanding you know, getting ready, getting our geese on, um, yeah. you know, the, there's there's support. And I think that's ultimately important. But there, there is also that level of trust in yeah. you taking that step to get onto the mats in the first place, yeah. knowing that it would be a safe space yeah. for you as a female. For me, it's also helped a lot because I I have had a diagnosis of both autism spectrum disorder since 2011 I think and I just got diagnosed with HDHD as well yeah so for me it's been one of the best outlets as well in that sense because I need to be present and I can focus and I get this calm inside my head even where yeah. when you're under a lot of pressure when you're sparring for example yeah. it's kind of like meditation for me <laughs> so for me it's helped a lot <laughs> I love it. I love the the thought of the meditation. Um, yeah. I've played through in my head. Um, I haven't yet competed. We'll get onto your competitions in a minute. But I imagine really slowing down the game, taking things at my pace. And, you know, at, at the very, very beginning, I'm not sure whether you had this, at the very beginning of my kind of white belt journey, you know, I kind of imagine pulling on chokes or arm bars. I mean, I couldn't do them in real life, but yeah. in my head, I'm like, okay, this is going in, that's happening, and and it's all there. Um, so how do you deal with the the kind of what happens for you when you go into this kind of meditative state when you're training and sparring? I feel like, to be honest, I don't have a lot of thoughts when I go into this. I just try to react to my opponent. 
Nice. That's that's when I finally get some peace in my head. So that <laughs> I just I have fun it. with it. I love it. So the the flip side, it's being present with yeah. what's exactly happening. Yeah. So it's an opportunity to push all of those thoughts out of your head and yeah. just to be present and in that moment. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I think, you know, it gives us so much joy to be in that space. Um, I'm a I'm a parent. I have a lot of responsibilities. And, you know, having that time in yeah. the way that you've just suggested, that's that's bliss. That's child free time, even though the kids are around and might yeah. be, you know, training on another mat. That's, you know, that's a joy. I think another important aspect as well is that the older we get, we kind of tend to forget to play, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So this is our time to actually enjoy ourselves, move and have fun. <laughs> I, I remember in one of the first episodes, I likened the uh, the training mats to, you know, putting a kid in a play gym. But it's yeah. exactly that. You know, I'm still I'm still to knee slide down the mats. I don't think they're quite slippy enough, but I need to find I need to find a gym with slippy mats and where you can do uh, hip escapes really easily. Uh, yeah. My gi always gets caught on the back and then I feel like I'm half undressed after a hip escape. But there we go. <laughs> OK, so let's talk about your competitions, because yeah. um, I know you've competed in three competitions and you have yeah. a couple coming up. Yeah, <laughs> I have one uh, coming up really soon in a few days that I'm really excited about. And then I have in a couple of months that it's in Denmark as well. That's a bit bigger, I think. Fantastic. So, so um, all of your competitions so far have been local. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about your build up and experience uh, going into those competitions. For me, it's kind of been like <laughs> this kind of madness thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I can't feel nerves before, to be honest. It, it always surprises me and it feels kind of surreal leading up to a competition. But when I'm finally there, that's when the nerves hit. <laughs> so I'm Love dealing it. with everything at once. <laughs> Good. And uh, how did you get on? What's your, what's your kind of success rate? Well, I haven't won any matches yet. <laughs> But I've okay. always like I've always learned a lot from the matches so far. So I always try to bring that into the next one and work on that. And as long as I bring something with me, that's a win to me, and that I step onto the mat as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we were we were talking before about the some of us get to compete, some of us yeah. don't want to compete. But actually, yeah. at the end of the day, there's still a relatively small percentage of us that mm -hmm. do step on the mats to compete. And, you know, it, it's a great thing. And there's lots of learning to come. There's me talking about competitions. I've not even done one yet, people. Um, OK, I'm I'm lined up to compete very soon this year. Um, and I will just be happy to be there. Um, I feel like the community spirit and the energy from these large scale events with people you don't know, that's mm -hmm. the most amazing thing. Uh, and being able to potentially see them again in a different country or a different location. For me, I'm expanding my international network and uh, friends around the world. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to have a little trip to Sweden at some point soon. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so opportunity to travel. Have D, will travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're always welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. For everyone that wants to visit as well. We're always happy for visitors as well. <laughs> fantastic so um you've walked away with medals even though you've yeah. not won matches yeah so it's most it's, it, yeah <laughs> okay so yeah. explain the concept of a default medal um just for anyone that doesn't understand it's kind of like if it, it kind of depends if um let's say that i don't have enough competitors in the uh, in my bracket we could be like three people maybe that means yeah. i automatically got a get onto the podium as well so I get a medal anyway but I haven't really won it in that sense okay yeah. I think I think walking away with the learning and experience but of course you know walking away with a, a medal might feel fantastic yeah it always okay. feels nice especially what I love as well uh, about competing is that 
it can feel like you're trying to kill each other on the map, <laughs> but afterwards you're like the best of friends as well. You get to meet all these amazing women or men for that matter. For me, it's that's one of the most important aspects of competing for me, networking and getting to know other people. Absolutely. This is the Jiu-Jitsu Lou podcast with me, Lou Temlett, coming to you from the UK. When you're ready to pick up some Jiu-Jitsu Lou merch, head over to jujitsulu.com forward slash shop. And if you're looking for a discount code, sign up to my newsletter. Today, I'm having a conversation with Sandra Hins. Sandra, so at the top of the show, we talked about um, your future self and overcoming past trauma. Mm-hmm. So I kind of want to frame the future self piece in a positive way, because when we start training jujitsu, some of us have no expectations. Mm-hmm. And coming out of that, you know, we, we walk away different from the mats each training session. You yeah. know, there's something different to take away. Likewise, there's something different to take away from every competition. Um, so tell me about your experience and how good it feels to have that future self for you particularly. For me, it feels really nice because I I know kind of what I want down the line as well. <laughs> because I, like I mentioned before about uh, more ladies stepping onto the mat, I want that to be my future legacy as well. That I can be a part of helping other ladies onto the mat, like the ladies I've gotten to know so far has helped me and is always helping me with support. That's that's very important Absolutely. to me for my f- future self. Absolutely. And that's really admirable. Um, so if any of you have, obviously, some of you, most of you have female friends, encourage them to to step on the mats, encourage them to come along to a, a session with you. Um, because, you know, anyone that does just has an amazing experience of community network growth. You know, I'm sure you can relate, Sandra, every yeah. female is there to support you and build you up. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just a fantastic space. You know, sometimes in life we can be quite isolated from different people, certainly since, you know, the working from home concept. Yeah. But actually to meet people in person, oh, to fight with them and pretend you're going to kill them is another story. But um, <laughs> um, pretend, by the way, uh, we're, we're all yeah. we're all in it, um, you know, for, for the well-being. But yeah, it just gives it a completely different dimension to life, one that I never expected. Mm. Yeah, for me, my teammates as well, they become like my second family. They are the ones that, whether I had a bad day or a happy day, I always think of letting them know because yeah. that's my safe space and that's my happy yeah. place. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. Uh, You know, and I think the friendships continue on and off the mats. Yeah. You know, it's just such a a wider expanse of of a network that is ultimately there to support and to build us up and and grow us um, into stronger, more resilient human beings. Yeah. That may one day stand on the top of that podium with a gold medal. Yeah. (laughs) okay that that might not be a good tactic on the mats but (laughs) fingers crossed for everyone now oh okay so we spoke about past trauma and I know you're comfortable talking about that how has that affected your life before training Brazilian jiu-jitsu kind of I turned even more introverted in the beginning and that's what I felt um with my jiu-jitsu journey as well, that I've kind of opened up a lot more and I've gained more confidence. For me, day one, when I stepped onto the mat, it feels like a completely different story. Yeah. Now I, I'm the I'm one of the people that can like chat openly to people, welcome them. I I I'm like <laughs> I don't I don't even know how to describe it. <laughs> you have that lived experience where you can sense and understand others, yeah. um, you know, and take them at, at face value. You know, everyone is equal on the mat, yeah. and I think that's one of the the joys. We're literally on the same level, yeah. on the same playing fields, uh, yeah. on the same kind of jujitsu mats, and dress the same. I was having a conversation with my daughter and uh, who's six and she doesn't even really recognize the color of the belts 
you know, everyone is equal in that space. And obviously it's, you know, that there's more dynamics. But as a child looking in, we are all equal. And I just feel like that's such a, a humble, honest way of, of perceiving Brazilian jiu-jitsu as well. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like all the labels just disappear. Yeah. And that's what I like because uh, quite often in life, people tend to put us like put us into different boxes instead of actually asking like what it what is it really like being you yeah they put labels on us but this kind of falls away with jiu-jitsu yeah and, and you feel appreciated the way you are so. yes i i agree and there's room and space for everyone and anyone and yeah. i think that's that's the joy isn't it yeah Okay, so I may well be heading for a competition very soon. What advice do you have? I think don't think too much about it, just have fun. I think that's one of the most important aspects because it's quite often really easy to put high expectations of yourself, but you shouldn't forget to just enjoy the moment at the same time. Yeah, so. yeah that's good. That's what they say about getting married as well. But uh, <laughs> enjoy the moment. I'm divorced a couple of times, but seriously. Okay. Yes, enjoy the moment. Yeah. For for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> I agree. Um, any other training advice or tips for competition? I feel like not really in competition particularly, but don't be afraid to let people know. Like when we were talking about the women on the mat, if you're new to the game, like don't be afraid to ask uh, higher belts to partner up with you because the white belt <laughs> men can be a bit uh, that's crazy <laughs> because they wait, don't wait. know yes. they wait. don't know how to control the body yet. <laughs> yes. I think I think some of us, almost all of us that have been on the mats, experience new white belt syndrome. Yeah or um condition um and that's okay you know we've yeah. all been there and we can all exactly. reflect and look back and go oh that reminds me of me when I first started mm. live and learn we all have to go through that yeah. process I think yeah so the tips are asking higher belts to yeah. train and, and kind of practice yeah, and, do and don't be afraid to tap just tap if you're uncomfortable tap yeah. Like, don't push yourself too far. Like, it's not losing because you tap, it's learning. Yes, I love that. So you've got your two competitions coming up. Yeah. Um, what, what aspirations, because we talked about the future self. I have a feeling like you have something bigger in your jujitsu mind. Are you happy to share? <laughs> I kind of goals right now is actually to place on the podium but by winning <laughs> so, okay that's fine that's fine yeah. <laughs> okay um, well everyone we will all will and wish sandra to be top place on that podium for every future competition we'll be looking out on your social sandra anything else <laughs> before we cascade into a face of laughter and frivolity <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you so much for having me on. Uh, oh, you are very welcome. I, like I mentioned before, like when I've been talking to you, is that I'm not the most comfortable when it comes to public speaking. So for me, this was a challenge in itself, but I felt like the message you're spreading is so important to me. So I wanted to challenge myself for that. Thank you. And I think, you know, the whole of the jiu-jitsu journey, you know, you've just demonstrated it perfectly, challenging yourself to <laughs> go that one step further that will take you out of your yeah. comfort zone because being in the comfort zone is lovely but what if you were to take yet another step so Sandra how can people follow your journey <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram on sandy underscore bjj fabulous I will pop the link in the show notes and I'm sure you will see uh real clip it's or clips reels even um <laughs> Uh, I'm a bit old school um, on socials, <laughs> old school, but uh, new school. Right. OK, Sandra, thank you so much. Let's encourage more and more women to start training jujitsu yeah. and have this safe space to 
be, exist, train, and have personal growth. Definitely. Great Thank stuff. you so much Thank for having you, me. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for telling your friends about the show. To get notified of upcoming guests and special offers, sign up to my newsletter at jujitsulu.com. Thanks again for listening. Catch you on the next episode of the Jiu-Jitsu Lou podcast. Oh, oh.